Okay, the demonstration I'm going to show today is called the carbide cannon. And it starts off with this compound called calcium carbide. If you were to see this out somewhere, you'd think it's like black gravel, not very impressive looking. But I'm going to put a little bit of it in this beaker of water right here. And right away, you see, it doesn't behave at all like black gravel. It bubbles away vigorously. That's just water. What exactly is happening with that? Well, the piece of calcium carbide and that formula is CaC2, is reacting with the water, good old H2O, liquid, and we're seeing bubbles, and also a cloudiness. You see right here, the beaker's gone cloudy. Well, that's because it's producing the compound acetylene, C2H2. Those are the bubbles of gas. And the calcium hydroxide is this milky white precipitate you see here. It's a solid that forms, it's not very soluble in water. Well, what I like best about this reaction is that all the reactants and all the products are quite visible. You can see all of those things. What we also like as chemists to be able to visualize what's going on at a molecular level. So the calcium carbide is a solid crystalline pattern, CaC2, good old water molecules, you're familiar with those, H2O. And of course, they're not just sitting still. Chemistry is a very dynamic thing, so they're moving around. The solid vibrating in place, a liquid moving around randomly. For this discussion though, we really only need to focus on one calcium carbide unit and two H2O molecules. So I'm going to put a two up there and you'll see why when it comes to balancing this. So, during the collision that takes place right here, we see water molecules attacking the calcium carbide. Now, I'm not telling you, I'm not telling you this is the exact reaction mechanism, but we'll, we'll assume it is. And look what you produce. Calcium hydroxide, and there's your acetylene gas. There's the stuff making it white, and there are the bubbles. So it's kind of neat. There's our starting material. Two water molecules needed because look what happens. We're creating CaOH2. We call that a balanced equation. Okay? That's impressive. But what's equally impressive, maybe even more impressive, is what we can do with the acetylene gas. So that's why I have the second beaker. Check this out. I'm going to take that exact same reaction, and all I'm interested in is the acetylene gas that's produced. Because watch what I can do with it. Ha ha! Acetylene's combustible. That means what? It reacts with oxygen, right? In the air. So, let's check out what that reaction looks like. Here's my dramatization of it. Poof! And there it is, reacting with oxygen. Remember, oxygen, diatomic. Two O's. Well, to get this one to balance like the previous one, I'll need two acetylene molecules. So I've got that and I've got two written up there. That's what that means. And I'll need a total of five oxygen. This is a much more complicated reaction in terms of balancing it. Now again, I'm not pretending that this is a reaction mechanism. The reaction mechanism, the exact order in which things combine, the collisions, the, the in-betweens, the intermediates. But um, we'll pretend this is what's going on that these seven molecules, boom, collide, rearrange, break old bonds, form new bonds, and form these four and two, six total molecules. Four carbon dioxide, we know for that, and two water molecules. Those are usually the products of combustion, okay? And there's what that looks like. So that's the reaction taking place when I lit the acetylene gas, okay? Now, that's all well and good, but that wasn't really an explosion. <laughs> For something to explode, you know it has to happen in a confined space. The pressure has to build up. So I've got these, these old Gatorade bottles, and I've got holes in the sides of them here, and about eh, 100 milliliters of water in each one. In this first one, I'm going to put in about a half a gram of the calcium carbide, and I'm going to plug it up with this bandana. There's my confined space. Okay? In the second one, I'm going to put in, excuse me, two and a half grams of calcium carbide. So five times as much. And let me plug that one up here, too. Okay? So, same exact reaction we saw here with the flame, but now it's going to take place in a confined space. Now, when these things run out of butane, you can't do that anymore, but you can still do the clicking. So this one ran out of butane and I stuck a speaker wire down in there. So when I pull the trigger now, 
There's a little tiny spark that forms on the tip of it there. So, this is potentially pretty loud, so you all need to cover your ears. I'm going to use some headphones here because I have to have my hand free to pull the trigger. And that's what that little hole in the side is for, so I can put this little sparker in there. So, I'll give you the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, look at that. Knock the jug clear off. <laughs> that was just that was just a half a gram of it. This one has five times as much. Okay, are we ready? Yeah, I'm gonna use double protection on this one here. Okay? We're ready. Okay? Get set. Really, cover those ears now. One. Two, three. What happened? Uh huh. Well, I'll tell you what happened. If a little is good, more is not always better. Hmm. Let's see if we can answer with this slide here. I've got a little half gram of calcium carbide in there. It's producing acetylene. It's pushing out some of the oxygen, but still, look what we have in here. This is the first one we did. The one that's on the floor right now. We've got a good, healthy mixture of, cal of acetylene and oxygen. Maybe not that exact proportion, but it's somewhere near that range, so we call that an explosive mixture. And I evidence that by bringing this in there. Watch a little spark there. Boom! Okay, and down came the bandana. That worked fine. By the way, notice what I got here now. I've replaced the acetylene and oxygen with carbon dioxide and water. Now, there are a couple of acetylenes left in there. A couple oxygens, but it's mostly carbon dioxide and water. That's the product. How about the second one, though? I put in five times as much. You were expecting five times, five times the volume. A much more vigorous reaction. Well, I had a more vigorous reaction here, and it produced a lot more acetylene. But look what that did. It pushed out almost all of our oxygen, and probably some of the acetylene was escaping, too. This would not be a combustible mixture. It's got way too much acetylene and not enough oxygen. So what happens when I put the trigger in? Nothing. No reaction at all because this was not an explosive mixture. Now, I got one thing I want to show you here. Let me hit the lights. This is a video I took of this and I still, I just have the still frame of it. This is just before, I think it's one thirtieth of a second before um, I, pull, I pull the trigger. I pull the trigger, boom. Look at that bright flash of light. That took place here, but probably too fast for the eye to see. The next frame, it's over. A little residual flame. Look at the bandana shooting up there. It's a blur. And after that, of course, what happens? I grab the bottle that time, and the bandana lands on my head. Thank you. <laughs>